Today, Bello Mundo is going to take you to see something that is far from beautiful. The worst punishments meted out in North Korea. Here, families are uprooted from their homes and sent to forced labor camps. Young people are beaten for crimes considered trivial. Watching a foreign music video can mean public execution. And believe it or not, prisoners are used as guinea pigs in inhumane experiments. Get ready to explore the darkest side of humanity, where fear is the only certainty. Number 1. Internal Exile When we think of exile, we usually imagine someone being forced to leave their homeland without being able to return. In North Korea, this would be a relief for many, a chance to escape oppression. But there, exile takes on a much crueler form. Internal exile in North Korea is a punishment reserved for those who fall out of favor with the regime. It's not just a change of address, it's a real social and economic condemnation. The exiles are forced to leave their homes and live in remote and poor areas, where living conditions are extremely difficult. These areas, usually mountainous and difficult to access, are chosen to completely isolate the exiles from the rest of society. There, they live without access to basic services, such as health and education, and are constantly watched to make sure they don't try to escape or rebel. And it's not just the culprit who pays the price. The whole family, including generations to come, is also forced to endure this punishment. Children are born and grow up in these places, carrying the weight of their ancestors' mistakes without any hope of a better future. Which brings us directly to our next topic. Number 2. Punishing Generations In North Korea, making a mistake can not only ruin a life, but also condemn the entire family and future generations of the one who made the mistake. This is because of a system called Song Bun, which can be translated as something akin to social status. This abominable system emerged in the 1950s, shortly after the Korean War, when the regime of Kim Il-sung, the current leader's grandfather, decided to divide the population based on loyalty to the government. It determines who has privileges and who is marginalized. If someone commits a transgression, such as trying to flee the country or criticizing the government, the whole family can be demoted. And what does that mean? Loss of access to a good education, limitation to heavy and poorly paid jobs, and exclusion from any chance of participating in the Workers' Party, something essential for a more stable and dignified life in North Korea. This punishment goes beyond simple social reclassification. It takes us back to the internal exile mentioned earlier, i.e., Families who fall into disgrace are sent to remote and isolated regions, where they are practically forgotten, repeating the cycle of suffering from generation to generation. And this system doesn't just serve as punishment, it is a powerful weapon of the regime to keep everyone living in constant fear of losing everything. In this way, the North Korean government ensures that no one dares to defy its rules. Number 3. Forced Labor Camps If internal exile is cruel enough, forced labor camps take this brutality to an even more inhumane level. In North Korea, these camps, known as Kualiso, are the last stop for those the regime considers enemies, be they political prisoners, deserters, or even people accused of minor infractions. Prisoners are forced to work long hours, often without rest, in tasks ranging from mining and construction to heavy farming. The conditions are so brutal that many prisoners cannot survive for long. Hunger, disease, and accidents at work are commonplace, and death is often seen as a release from the daily horrors. Survival in these camps is a constant challenge. Food rations are scarce, often limited to small portions of corn or rice. Prisoners are forced to supplement their diets with anything they can find, including insects and small animals. 
This chronic malnutrition leads to extreme weakness, making the work even more strenuous and the chances of survival even slimmer. Reports of physical and psychological torture abound. The guards use violence as a tool to maintain control and punish any attempt at resistance. Beatings, sexual abuse, and summary executions are common practices in these camps, making them a veritable hell on earth. Number 4. Public Trials After leaving the labor camps, we go to the streets and public squares, where the North Korean regime uses public humiliation as a tool of social control. Public trials and punishments are common practice, especially for what the government considers to be direct threats to its authority, such as the consumption of foreign culture. Think of a young North Korean who has secretly decided to watch a South Korean drama or listen to a K-pop song. To many of us, this may seem harmless, but in North Korea, it is considered an act of rebellion against the state. When these young people are discovered, they are put on public trial, where their actions are exposed for all to see. The verdict is almost always the same, guilty. Punishments vary, but in many cases, they include public beatings, where young people are beaten in front of their communities to set an example. But this scenario, which is already bad, can get even worse. In more serious situations, such as the sharing of foreign materials, the punishment can be public execution, which is our next subject. Number 5. Public Executions The death penalty and public executions are one of the regime's most terrifying practices. These actions are carried out in order to maximize terror among the population, ensuring that everyone understands the consequences of defying the regime. The methods of capital punishment vary, but the most common include firing squad and hanging. In many cases, the killings are carried out in public squares, with hundreds or even thousands of spectators forced to watch. The aim is clear, to use fear as a tool of social control. Public executions are often accompanied by propaganda speeches, where the transgressions of the condemned are detailed and used as an example of what happens to traitors to the state. These sentences are not only reserved for serious acts, such as attempted escape or murder. Even minor offenses, such as sleeping, can lead to the death penalty. One of the most extreme cases that exemplifies the severity of the country's laws occurred in 2015. The Minister of Defense, Hyun Yong-chol, was caught napping during a military meeting. Kim Jong-un, the supreme leader, did not tolerate this transgression. Hyun was summarily removed from office and, according to South Korean agency reports, executed with the use of anti-aircraft missiles in front of several witnesses. Number 6. Torture Another example of cruel punishment that we cannot ignore is torture. This practice is common in North Korean detention centers and prisons. Physical and psychological abuse are not only methods of punishment, but also of coercion, where prisoners are forced to confess to crimes they often didn't commit or to provide information about other people, even if it's false. The methods are varied and cruel. Beatings with metal rods, electric shocks, sleep and food deprivation, simulated drowning and other forms of physical and sexual violence are just some of the common practices. Prisoners are kept in cramped cells with no room to move, often tied up in painful positions for hours, days or even weeks. In addition to physical abuse, there is also psychological torture. Prisoners are constantly threatened with death or the punishment of their family members. Many are forced to watch the execution of other inmates or take part in acts of violence against their colleagues. Number 7. No Standing Leaving the torture rooms, we now move on to the prison corridors, where prisoners are forced to walk bent over at all times. 
This practice, although it may seem less violent than other forms of punishment, is an extremely effective form of dehumanization and control. Walking bent over is not only physically painful, it is a symbol of total submission. Prisoners are forced to adopt this posture at all times as a constant reminder of their inferiority and the regime's absolute authority. Those who try to walk upright are immediately punished, often with severe beatings or food restrictions. As well as walking bent over, in some situations prisoners are forced to crawl through the corridors, and what is already bad can get even worse. When they arrive in their cells, up to five people are squeezed into a tiny space of just six square meters with no heating. In addition to the cold, it's so tight that you can't even stand up or stretch, making the suffering unbearable. Number eight, food restriction. Hunger is one of the most brutal weapons used by the North Korean regime to control both the general population and prisoners. In labor camps and prisons, food restriction is a common practice, used not only as a form of punishment, but also as a way of keeping prisoners weak and unable to resist. Daily rations in labor camps often consist of small amounts of rice or corn, insufficient to sustain an adult person. Prisoners are forced to supplement their diet with anything they can find, from herbs and roots to insects and rats. Malnutrition is widespread, and many prisoners die of starvation or malnutrition-related diseases. The restriction of food is not just limited to prisoners. The general population also suffers from food shortages, especially in times of economic crisis or natural disaster. The North Korean government uses food distribution as a form of control, ensuring that those loyal to the regime receive more, while enemies of the state are left to starve. This practice creates a population that is permanently weakened and dependent on the state, unable to organize or resist. Starvation, like many other forms of punishment in North Korea, is a tool of social control designed to keep the population in a constant state of fear and submission. Number 9. Kidnappings Abroad Now, as we leave the confines of North Korea, we come to another of the regime's cruel practices, kidnappings and forced repatriation. These tactics are used to punish anyone who tries to escape government control. Since the 1970s, the North Korean government has been kidnapping citizens from other countries, especially Japan and South Korea, to force them to work for the regime or use them as bargaining chips in negotiations. These kidnappings take place clandestinely, often in the middle of the night. The victims are taken to North Korea, where they are held captive for years, without any contact with the outside world. They are forced to teach their country's languages and customs to North Korean spies or to work in inhumane conditions with no hope of return. One case that became famous was the kidnapping of South Korean filmmaker Shin Sang-ok and his ex-wife, actress Choi Yun-hee. In 1978, the actress was lured to Hong Kong with a false job offer and ended up being forcibly taken to North Korea. Shortly afterwards, Shin was captured while trying to find out what had happened to her. After years of confinement, they were forced to work for dictator Kim Jong-il, producing films for the regime. They only managed to escape in 1986 with the help of the U.S. Embassy in Vienna. Number 10. Forced Repatriation In addition to kidnappings, the North Korean regime also forces the repatriation of citizens who have managed to escape to neighboring countries, such as China. Imagine the despair of being forced to return to the hell you tried to leave behind. Those who are captured by the Chinese authorities are returned to North Korea due to the friendly relationship between the two countries. Back in their country of origin, they face torture, forced labor, and in many cases, execution. 
those who have managed to escape to South Korea, where they are granted asylum, live in constant fear that agents of the regime will find them and force them to return. If this were to happen, they would inevitably be executed or subjected to extreme torture. This fear is not unfounded, as there are reports of defectors being kidnapped in foreign countries and taken back to the North Korean regime. Number 11. Prisoners used as guinea pigs As if all the forms of torture and punishment we've discussed so far weren't enough, the North Korean regime is also accused of using prisoners as guinea pigs in scientific and military experiments. These experiments range from chemical weapons tests to inhumane medical research, carried out without the prisoner's consent and often resulting in painful deaths. The accounts of these experiments are terrifying. Prisoners are exposed to chemical and biological agents to test their effects, often in closed chambers where they have no chance of escape. In other cases, they are forced to ingest toxic substances to assess the damage caused to their internal organs. The survivors of these experiments are left to die or are executed to ensure that the regime's secrets are not revealed. The practice of using prisoners as guinea pigs is a reflection of the complete dehumanization of the North Korean penal system. In the eyes of the regime, these prisoners are not human beings with rights, but disposable objects to be used and disposed of as needed. These experiments are carried out in secret, but the accounts of those who have managed to escape and witness these atrocities are a shocking reminder of the depths of cruelty to which the regime is willing to descend. Number 12. Pure Breed And as if all these atrocities weren't enough, last and by no means least, we have the violation of women's right to their bodies. Women in North Korea face significant challenges in relation to their reproductive rights. NGOs and defectors report that, in some cases, the authorities interfere with pregnancies, especially in situations involving women repatriated from China. According to a 2022 report, there is a policy of forcing an end to pregnancies that would result in mixed-race babies. Driven by an official ideology that values the purity of the Korean race at any cost, in the name of racial purity, witnesses revealed that in 2015, the regime forced nurses at a hospital to draw up a list of dwarfs and performed hysterectomies the surgical removal of the uterus, on women with dwarfism to prevent them from becoming pregnant. In North Korea, people with disabilities face difficulties in accessing education and health services on an equal basis with others. Although the law requires accessibility, government support is inconsistent, and most infrastructure is not adapted for people with physical disabilities. In some cases, authorities have isolated people with disabilities in remote areas and performed medical procedures without consent. In addition, social norms still allow discrimination, including in the workplace. Children with disabilities are especially vulnerable to social isolation, and the special education offered to them is considered inadequate. What do you think of the punishments handed down in North Korea? Which one surprised you the most? Tell us in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends so that they too can learn about these shocking realities and other incredible curiosities. Thank you very much for watching and see you on our next adventure.